Now the first thing we need to do in order to, to load test a WCF service is actually create our WCF service. Now I've gone ahead and I've already done that for us. Now I've created a standard WCF application that's created a service for me that will be hostable in IIS. And I've gone ahead and I've created the iPerf service. iPerf service is pretty straightforward. It has a single operational contract called get data, takes a seed, returns back a complex object. Underneath the coverage of get data is a fairly simple method. Basically, because this isn't real, I'm not hitting, hitting a database or not doing any business logic, I want to emulate some kind of processing. So what I did is I've used a random number, I've grabbed it, I'm going to build an object model where I'm randomly adding items to the object model based on the seed. I'm then sleeping for a random period of time to kind of give the effect that I'm actually doing something. And then I'll go ahead and return back that object model across the wire. Nothing major, you can see it works, um, but it gives me a WCF service that I can use for this. Now once I have this service, what I need to do now is go about creating our unit test that can be used for the load test. So let's go ahead and do that now. Now in this project, I have my test host, and what I've done is I've gone ahead and I've already created our unit test, just to save some typing. But I've also gone ahead and I've already wired up our web service. I've gone ahead and added a service reference to our web service, so no big deal there. And I've created our project. The project I've created is just a standard test project. So I've gone in, create a new project, do test, and click test project. I then created a test that had a, had a little intelligence behind it. Because I want my test to kind of emulate real scenarios where the data is random and not the same request over and over again, I built in this little randomizer. So I've got this collection of seeds and I populate that at the start of my test run. And I have a method called getNextSeed, which basically will randomly grab a number out of the list and return it. Then I have two unit tests. They both have the same logic, and I did two of them to kind of show that you can run multiple tests within our load test and actually split the distribution of which method gets called when and how often. Basically in this test, I just grab a seed, create an instance of my client, go ahead and call off to our web service. Don't really care about the response here. I'm just going to call off. And that's it for my unit test. It's pretty straightforward. So now how do we go about creating the ability to run this unit test under a load scenario within Visual Studio and monitor and measure that information? So to do that, I want to go back to our solution. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to right click our project and I'm going to click Add. And you'll see within my test project, I have a lot of new templates here. The one I want to use is the load test. When I choose load test, it will bring up the wizard. This wizard will walk me through all the different settings I need for my test. So let's go ahead and click next. And we'll call this scenario the Dimecast scenario. There's a couple different ways that we can do think time. This is the time between iterations. We're going to go ahead and use the normal distributions. So let's go ahead and click next again. So the next thing we want to do is what is our load? Do we want two users, a hundred users? I believe there's a hard limit at about 2,500 users. Uh, for for uh, Visual Studio Ultimate. Um, for the most part, that's probably going to be more than I'm going to need. And if I want a constant load, I can set this to 5, or I can even step it. So I can say starts off at 10, then every duration, every 5 seconds, 10 seconds, 2 minutes, whatever, increase my user count to hits a max number. We're going to go ahead and leave it at 5. Let's go ahead and click Next again. Next thing is, how should I actually run my test? Should I model it so I have a total number of tests where I'm actually distributing, you know, all my users are calling them at different rates? Do I want to have virtual users? Do I want to use it based on pace so things as things stop and come back, I go to the next one? Or I can even do it sequentially where everything's done at the exact same time, time and time again. We're going to go ahead and do based on number of tests. So let's click next. Next we get to the screen that allows us to choose which unit test to run. To do this, we just simply click Add, bring up the dialog, and I can choose one test. If I choose one test, you'll see that gives me 100% for my distribution. Let's go ahead and choose another test. You'll see by default, it'll distribute those evenly, but I can change those. I can have one you know, at 75% and one at 25%. I can tweak them back and forth however I want. Let's go ahead and do it you know, 70-30. Now I can go ahead and click Next. And this is the part that I think is pretty cool. All of our data is going across a network at some point, right? Whether you're within a LAN environment, whether you're a mobile app or a browser app and you're going over the internet. Because of this, 
you can actually choose what type of network connectivity you want to emulate. Let's go and choose 3G because we're going to pretend we're a mobile app. And if I wanted to add multiple network types, I could do that as well. So we can even distribute the type of network act, network scenarios I'm using during my test run. Let's go ahead and click Next. Then finally, it's going to ask us for a computer to use. We're going to call, call this localhost. And if I expand this, it's going to ask us which counters do I want to monitor by default. Let's go and do application and .NET. Let's go ahead and click Next again. And then last we get to the screen that asks us for how long do we want this test to run. We can do two things. We can have a warm up session and then a run or we can do iterations. I can simply say run 100 times and be done with it. Um, what we're going to do here is we're going to have a warm up of 30 seconds and have it run for a minute. Basically this warm up for 30 seconds will prime the pumps if you will. Because a lot of times if you hit a service for the first time or hit the database for the first time, it's going to take longer that first time around because it's got to establish those connections and put stuff into memory. So the warm-ups will allow you to preload that before you start hitting, hitting it time and time again in your real run. And then you have some other options in terms of validation rules. What type of rules do you want? You can even give it a sampling rate. The sampling rate is how often do you want your charts and your grid to update. So let's go ahead and click Finish. When this is done, it's going to create this load test. And it'll give you the scenarios, the counters, and the run settings. You can make changes to this after the fact by right-clicking and looking at properties. So you can see there's a whole slew of different things you can change over here. To run this, which is the intent here, right? Let's just go ahead and choose this little run, and we'll do run test. But before I do that, I should probably start my web service. So my web service is now started, so now we can start running this. So we're going ahead and we're running our test now. So the first thing you just got to do is compile everything. And that's going to pop up to our grids. And you can see in the top right hand corner here, I have a warm up remaining. And you can see that it's actually starting to take measurements. What's pretty cool is all the different measurements you can take. But one thing I want to point out is the fact that there is some default measurements and indicators created, but I do have the ability to add my own graph. We'll go and call this graph custom. Within custom, I can add my own counters to it. So you'll see over on the left here, there's a whole slew of different counters I want, or I have the ability to use. And I can pull it in based on tests, I can pull it in based on a whole different things. So let's go and just drag on counters just for the one of our unit tests. And you can see that I can look at things like number of tests passed, test pass per second, I can look at average test time, it takes 0.82 milliseconds to run. I can look at all these different unit or measurements, and I can do it on a per test basis, or I can do it at the network level, the database level, all these different things. Um, and it's extremely powerful, and you can measure this, and you can actually record this over time. Let's go ahead and do one thing. Let's go ahead and make this a one panel. And you can see that as my test is running, that my measurements continue to, to be counted at my five second interval. Right? That was that recording time that we saw a second ago in our wizard. So there you go. In about 10 minutes, we took a look at how you can create a web service, create a unit test that hits our web service, but most importantly, create a load test, go through the wizard, set up all the various different settings, and then run my load test and see the metrics that are being produced. Um, and I can do this all within Visual Studio. Now again, it does take the Ultimate Edition, so you do need Visual Studio Ultimate. Um, uh, if you do have that, you can use this. So I hope you learned something. Until next time.